Yes, winter is wonderful to some, but right now we're talking about the downside of winter, and that's driving in bad weather. In this short program, we'll take a look at winter driving and how to reduce driving accidents, injuries, and hopefully reduce the many problems associated with winter driving. In this program, we'll discuss important topics such as vehicle maintenance, winter weather, special driving tips, and personal safety in cold weather. However, we won't list a large number of statistics showing increased death and injury rates in winter weather. Winter driving does increase the accident rate, but that's pretty well known by anyone operating a vehicle. In fact, the leading cause of death during winter storms is transportation accidents. We've researched the subject quite well, drawing expertise from all over the world, driving experts, winter driving test track operators, weather experts, and more. But let's face it, we can't possibly cover every situation or information relating to safe driving in bad weather and winter driving. Driving in any weather depends greatly on the type of vehicle you operate, how you react to a situation, reflexes, and many other variables. Always follow your company's policies and procedures and use your own experience and good judgment when operating any type of vehicle in bad weather. Have a professional check all systems of your vehicle and perform winterization of all fluids, making sure you have appropriate fluids in the radiator, windshield wiping system, winter weight motor oil, and other fluids appropriate for your potential weather and temperatures. It is particularly important that all the tires have adequate tread and you maintain recommended air pressure. Contrary to popular belief, reducing air pressure in your tires does not afford greater traction. All weather radials are usually adequate for most winter conditions, except in particularly harsh winter zones. Some jurisdictions may require your vehicle to be equipped with snow tires with studs or chains. Keep a windshield scraper and small broom for ice and snow removal. A small shovel is recommended in case you get stranded or stuck. Maintain at least half a tank of gas during the winter season. A vehicle first aid kit, flashlight, and other materials should be kept in the vehicle. Consider carrying a sleeping bag and blankets because stranded motorists have frozen to death in cold weather. Headlights, heater, and defrosters should also be checked before bad weather arrives. During bad weather, headlights should be cleaned more often as dirty headlights can reduce visibility in bad weather by 50%. Check all hoses and belts, and the engine should be well tuned. The battery and alternator should be checked because cold weather puts added power strain on your electrical and battery systems. Make sure you have appropriate tire changing tools. Often, the reason people do get into trouble on the road in winter is failure of the vehicle itself. Think of what occurs when you're stranded in wintertime. It's usually a traumatic and dangerous event. If you're making long trips or trips on isolated roads, what would you do if you had to spend the night in your car? Did you bring a sleeping bag, blanket, water, or other survival materials? Tow ropes or chains or flares? The time to plan is before bad weather arrives. Let's talk about the weather because we can't do much about it. First of all, we'll briefly look at several possible weather conditions. Tornadoes have occurred in every state in the United States, even Alaska. You already know the dangers of a tornado, but are you aware of what to do in case you're involved with one? Your vehicle is not safe in a tornado. Get shelter, but not in your vehicle. We don't want to tell you what shelter is the best because in any case of emergency, you'll have to make the decision. But some people in tornadoes have successfully sought shelter under bridges, overpasses, inside drain pipes, and other secure structures. Hurricanes create high winds, flooding, and great property damage. Again, your car is not safe in a hurricane. Flooding is particularly dangerous because vehicles can be swept away by the force of the water. Water is nature's most powerful force. 
If the roads are flooded or even slightly flooded, the possibility of losing control of your vehicle is greatly increased due to many factors. There's the chance of roadway damage due to water and floods. Of course, obey warnings when it's raining because these warning signs are based upon experience in this particular area. Hydroplaning, created by water reducing the friction between the road and the vehicle tires, can cause a loss of control of your vehicle. Slow down and watch out for other drivers. Of course, rain, mud, snow, sleet, and ice make driving extremely hazardous. Poor visibility, slippery road surfaces, combined with many other hazards, make driving in these conditions an accident waiting to happen. You may hear the word whiteout. The National Weather Bureau provides the definition of whiteout as a condition caused by falling or blowing snow that reduces visibility to nothing or zero miles, typically only a few feet. Whiteouts can occur rapidly, blinding motorists and creating chain reaction crashes involving multiple vehicles. Whiteouts are most frequent during blizzards. When a whiteout occurs, stop driving. We'll mention hail as a weather condition because it usually doesn't last very long. Hail is nothing more than ice balls dropping from the sky. In most cases, the size of the hail will be small and will quickly melt. However, in parts of the United States and other countries, hail the size of baseballs can fall and severely injure anyone caught outside in the storm. Mothball size hail can injure as well. Property damage is generally the major casualty of hail storms, but they can make driving dangerous. The best advice is don't drive in these conditions, but if you must, slow down. Listen or watch for weather forecasts and pay attention to these warnings. These warnings range from winter storm watches and warnings to severe blizzard warnings. Take the time to understand the warning systems in your area and follow the safety directions provided. Snow, rain, and ice are perhaps the most common hazards because they impair visibility and make the roads slippery. Again, slow down in bad weather. It's really difficult to understand how some drivers, often called idiots, drive fast in bad weather. Where is the mentality in that? They couldn't possibly be in that big of a hurry. In bad weather, your stopping distance is greater, your visibility is limited, and a hundred other things can go wrong. So why not slow down and drive responsibly? A word of caution is in order. If you're caught in severe weather, use your headlights, warning flashers, and pull to the side of the road. In many instances, it has been recorded that motorists caught in severe weather will simply stop in the roadway. They mistakenly believe that if they can't see where they're going, no one else can. Major crashes have been caused by people stopping on the road to wait out the storm. Pull off the road because there is always someone who thinks they can make it no matter what and will plow into vehicles that are stalled on the road. The same thing applies in heavy fog. Pull off the road. You've all seen television reports of pileups and injuries relating to fog. People can't see. They slow down or stop and faster drivers or tailgaters crash into the vehicles in front of them. It only takes a second to lose visibility. It's just senseless and it doesn't have to happen. What's the procedure in case you're stuck in snow or ice? A good rule of thumb is to never allow the vehicle's tires to spin. By spinning your wheels, you're only creating a larger hole. Remove as much snow and ice around the tires as possible. Then use wood, tree branches, or anything that will provide friction so when you're ready to get out of the hole you're in, this will create traction between the tire and these materials. Again, don't spin your wheels. Slow, steady traction is your best bet. You may not be in an area where animals are feeding or near the roadway. However, if you are, this is particularly dangerous in the early morning or late at night when the animals may be near the roadway feeding. If you don't heed the warning signs, it could be harmful to you and to the animal. 
Even small animals can cause accidents because a natural human tendency is to swerve to avoid hitting any living animal. Heed the warning signs and slow down, particularly at night or early morning in these areas. In this section, let's take a look at some special driving considerations and safety tips. The first rule is that the posted speed limit is not the speed limit. It depends upon the driving conditions. A speed limit of 45 miles per hour may be unsafe and the conditions may require a speed limit of 25 miles per hour or lower. In icy conditions, or if you expect ice, steer gently and avoid harsh turns, braking, or acceleration. Keep a safe stopping distance between you and other vehicles. Remember how far it takes your vehicle to stop on dry pavement? Look at the skid marks on the road. You can double or triple the hazard in poor weather. In winter conditions, it takes at least three times the distance to stop or avoid skidding. This means the safe distance from a vehicle in front of you is three times greater. You must begin braking three times as far away from a stoplight or corner where you're turning. What type of brakes are on your vehicle? Do you know the difference between conventional and anti-lock braking systems? It's your responsibility to understand which braking system you have on your vehicle. On conventional braking systems, you can reduce the danger of skidding by driving more slowly and by pumping or tapping the brakes as you slow down. Slamming on the brakes and holding them down has a tendency to lock your brakes, and when this occurs, you can't steer the vehicle. If your vehicle is equipped with an anti-lock braking system, or ABS, then just apply a firm, steady pressure on the brake and allow the electronic system to pump the brakes. It is extremely important that you know if your vehicle is equipped with ABS or not, and you should know how to use your ABS in bad weather. Four-wheel ABS is a safe, effective braking system when used properly. It prevents wheels from locking and makes more effective braking with greater control. When braking with anti-lock brakes in emergency conditions, keep your foot on the brake. Maintain firm and continuous pressure on the brake while steering to enable four-wheel ABS to work properly. Avoid pumping the brake, even if the brake pedal is pulsating or you hear abnormal sounds. In light trucks equipped with rear-wheel anti-lock brakes, the front brakes can lock up the same as conventional brakes. If this occurs, the driver should ease up on the brake pedal with just enough pressure to allow the front wheels to roll again for proper steering. You need practice making emergency stops with ABS. There are pulsations that occur in the brake pedal when ABS is activated, as well as mechanical noises and or slight pedal pressure. This is normal and it lets the driver know the ABS is working you must learn the difference between four-wheel and rear-wheel ABS. Four-wheel ABS is generally found on passenger cars and are designed to maintain steerability and directional stability in emergency braking situations. Rear-wheel ABS, found exclusively on light trucks, is designed to maintain directional stability and prevent the vehicle from skidding sideways. On four-wheel ABS-equipped vehicles, Pumping the brake turns the electronic braking system on and off. This decreases braking efficiency and increases stopping distance. ABS pumps the brakes for you automatically at a much faster rate and allows better steering control. Never get the idea that you can drive more aggressively with anti-lock brakes. These brakes won't stop you faster. It's simply a system that helps reduce skidding by regulating the braking power. Use low gears on slick surfaces, especially on hills and curves. Test your brakes frequently, and of course, don't tailgate. If you're doing all the things correctly and you find yourself skidding, don't brake with conventional systems. Take your foot off the accelerator and gently turn your vehicle in the direction in which you want your front wheels to go. Hitting the brakes or turning sharply will only lock you into a skid. Some experts advise you to gently tap the brakes, then release, then tap, then release. 
Many accident investigators state the only cause of skids is driver error. A skid is caused when drive wheels lose their traction, thus driver error regardless of the road condition. In skids, good driving techniques will help avoid accidents. Steer the car in the proper direction and correct the condition that caused the skid in the first place, and that's traction. Too aggressive acceleration will cause the drive wheels to spin, so let up on the accelerator. This also allows the tires to regain traction with the road surface. Use your judgment on the accelerator. Too slow or too fast can cause the drive tires to skid. Skids are corrected or eliminated with steering and the accelerator. Another important tip is when you're pulling a trailer, particularly when pulling a trailer with a passenger vehicle. These trailers do not have brakes. Trailers rely upon the vehicle's braking system. Another factor is the trailer relies upon the straight angle between the vehicle and trailer. Force to stop the trailer is applied from the vehicle through the trailer hitch and tongue to the trailer. If the trailer is at an angle, such as when skidding at an angle, there's very little force to control or stop the trailer. A jackknife situation can be deadly when this occurs. When driving on a steep hill in bad weather, put the vehicle in a lower gear. This includes automatic transmissions. You don't want the vehicle shifting gears halfway up the hill causing a reduction in the friction between the tires and the road. Same for driving down. If it is a steep downgrade, you can imagine what happens if you lose control. Again, slow your speed. When you're skidding, it's difficult to control your vehicle. If you lose control, it's better to steer into a snowbank or similar object rather than risk a collision in traffic. These driving tips or procedures aren't difficult, but it takes an effort to keep them in your memory bank. Practice and learn the techniques before you have to use them. Winter driving is like a fire extinguisher. If you don't practice using the extinguisher in case of an emergency, you may forget a couple of important steps that will lead to trouble. Skids are caused by a combination of braking and steering at the same time. If you lock your brakes, then obviously you can't steer. Oversteering and speed can cause skids. Okay, more on icy conditions. So let's mention black ice. It's just a result of rain falling on the road and instantly freezing. Because it generally cannot be instantly recognized visually, people call it black ice. Freeway overpasses and bridges are often covered with ice, even when the rest of the road is dry. Cold air gets under the bridge and keeps the road surface frozen, creating a hazard. The rest of the road may be dry because heat from the ground will melt the ice. Shaded areas also may be slippery due to black ice because the sun hasn't melted the ice as it will with non-shaded areas. At 30 degrees Fahrenheit, ice is twice as slippery as it is at zero degrees. Don't forget the hazards of ice on overhanging branches and electrical wires. Make sure you have good clearances and stay away from parking your vehicle under these potential hazards. Falling ice or falling wires can be quite hazardous. Snow conditions create visibility hazards, so always use your headlights on low beam and keep the headlights clean. Take care to watch for irregular accumulations of snow arising from snow plowing operations and never overtake snow plows by squeezing into partially cleared lanes. Snow removal operations is designed to clear main roads, especially to hospitals, emergencies, and other main roads. Of course, the hazard of ice and snow mixed together can make driving extremely hazardous. Even frost on the road can lead to hazardous driving conditions. Another hazard that is rarely mentioned in winter driving is winter sun. Sun in your eyes can be intensified because of the sun being reflected off the snow. In this case, slow down and use your visor as necessary. Understanding the hazards of winter driving is often your best defense if you take action to reduce the hazard.
Quite often, particularly in agricultural, grassy areas, parks, and similar areas, irrigating grass or crops may continue even in bad weather. When irrigation water collects and floods pits near roads, the water can seep under the roadbeds and cause extensive damage. Sprinkler systems that spray on highways and roads can cause hydroplaning or create slick spots that may result in poor vehicle handling and accidents. Heavy rain or flooding is a dangerous time for operating vehicles. One of the greatest dangers of skidding arises when we have our first light rain shower after a long, hot, dry spell. During the heat, various oil and rubber debris dropped from engines and tires builds up and fills all the tiny cracks which give the road surface traction. This surface is now made up of solidified rubber dust and needs only a little water to make the surface very slick. Understand the hazard and use caution in these areas. Oh yes, oil, grease, and grime can be embedded in concrete and other types of road surfaces. Since we mentioned hydroplaning a couple of times, let's explain that a bit more. When water accumulates on highways and roads, the chances of hydroplaning are greatly increased. When a vehicle hydroplanes, this means the tire loses contact with the road. Under partial hydroplaning conditions, the tires lose only partial contact and results in an effective lowering of the friction coefficient between the tire and pavement. This condition can result in increased stopping distances and loss of control. Full dynamic hydroplaning occurs when the tire and pavement interface is unable to expel the water fast enough to allow the tire to contact the pavement surface. Also worsening this condition is poor tire tread depth, a decrease in tire pressure, a decrease in the normal load or weight of the tire, higher speeds, and poor drainage from the pavement. Some roads use grooved pavement to help reduce the effects of hydroplaning. Under full dynamic hydroplaning, a vehicle operator will experience a partial to total loss of control and often the vehicle will rotate due to differential drag forces acting on the vehicle or the vehicle may take an uncontrolled trajectory off the pavement surface. What's the answer to hydroplaning? Good tires, proper tire pressure, understanding how hydroplaning affects your vehicle and to slow down in wet weather conditions. If hydroplaning occurs, gently remove your foot from the gas and do not brake. Try to keep your vehicle steering wheel as straight as possible. Always in these conditions, keep your hands firmly on the steering wheel as when the vehicle regains traction, it may pull the vehicle in a different position than the one intended. Some experts advise to keep your vehicle from the center of your lane to one side of the lane. By reducing your traveling in well-worn paths or puddles, you'll have more contact with the road's surface. Another safety tip is to be aware that vehicles passing you in wet conditions can splash water on your windshield that can cause temporary loss of visibility. Vehicles coming from the other direction can also create this hazardous condition. Be alert and prepared for it to occur, and of course, slow down. Most people are surprised to learn that vehicle fires in winter occur quite frequently. One reason for vehicle fires in cold weather is people will allow their vehicle to warm up too long. In this case, the vehicle caught on fire under the passenger floorboard. It was caused by an overheated catalytic converter. Don't allow your vehicle to heat up too long before moving. Electrical systems can be overtaxed, creating shorts. Lack of proper ventilation and other causes of vehicle fires can be reduced by proper planning, using good judgment, and of course, being aware of the hazards. Snow removal is a necessary operation to keep roadways clear, especially for emergency travel to hospitals and other areas. Stay behind snow removal equipment and don't try to pass while they're performing their work. Experts say if you're caught in a storm, be prepared to spend three days in the vehicle. Sound bizarre? Tell that to many people who have been stranded for days. The first rule is to stay in your car. 
your chances of survival are much better. If you have a cell phone, of course you can call for assistance. If possible, position the vehicle so it faces into the wind. The vehicle was designed to be the warmest when headed into the wind. Make sure the exhaust is free of snow and check it periodically if you use the engine for heat. Run the engine for 10 minutes every hour and run the heater when the vehicle is running. It's recommended to turn on the dome light when the vehicle is running. Also, keep in mind that a combustion engine creates carbon monoxide. If you breathe carbon monoxide fumes long enough, it can kill you. If your exhaust system leaks fumes into your vehicle, it may be hazardous to run your engine and heater. Make sure your vehicle is ventilated when running the engine. If possible, tie a colorful banner on the car antenna to alert others that you need help. If you must leave the vehicle in a severe storm with greatly reduced visibility, make sure you can get back. Move emergency supplies from the trunk to the interior of the vehicle as soon as you know you'll be stranded for a while. Put on warm clothing immediately before you get cold. It is much easier to keep warm than to try and regain lost warmth. Loosen tight clothing so body heat can circulate. Remove metal jewelry. The metal will chill you and in extremely cold weather, the metal will freeze on your skin. If you have a snack of a high calorie food just before sleeping, this will stimulate your metabolism for higher heat production. We mentioned wind chill. What do we mean by wind chill? Wind chill is based on the rate of heat loss from exposed skin caused by the combined effects of wind and cold. As the wind increases, heat is carried away from the body at an accelerated rate, driving down the body temperature. At wind speed of four miles per hour or less, the wind chill temperature is approximately the same as the actual air temperature. The more wind you have, the greater the wind chill factor. Okay, a few more tips and it's over. Winter safety wouldn't be complete without a mention of frostbite. Superficial frostbite can occur any time where the skin is exposed to cold temperatures. Basically, frostbite affects the dermis or skin and is recognized by white or gray colored patches. The affected skin feels firm but not hard. The skin usually turns red and once frostbitten is not painful. Tissue loss won't occur if properly treated. Large blisters on the frostbitten area indicate that deep frostbite has occurred and has partially thawed. Treatment for deep frostbite should be done in a medical facility. Skin tissue that has been thawed and then refrozen always dies. For this reason, it is not recommended that you thaw frostbitten skin until you reach a medical facility. Here are some things you should not do with frostbitten skin. Never rub the frozen part. Don't ingest alcohol or tobacco. And never apply ice or snow to the frostbitten area. Don't attempt to thaw the frostbitten part in cold water or try to thaw the frostbitten area near stoves, fires, or other heat. Of course, never break blisters that may have formed on the skin. The best prevention is keeping warm because it's very easy to get frostbite. Most people assume that cotton or wool are the best fibers to wear in cold weather. However, these materials soak and retain moisture. Moisture against your skin in cold weather is dangerous. Cotton and wool won't keep heat in. The best clothing to wear in the winter is apparel made from synthetic fibers such as acrylic. Acrylic dries in about one-fifth the time of cotton. Your hands, face, and feet are quite susceptible to frostbite, so take good care of them. Take special precautions when deciding what type of clothing to wear in cold temperatures. Always cover your head with a hat or hood. You can lose 20 to 50 percent of body heat through your head, so keep it covered. When you're using a snowblower or shovel to remove snow, watch for signs of fatigue. There are many people who remove snow only to find they're not in the best of shape and ultimately end up with a heart attack. Use caution and don't overexert yourself when you're working in the snow. 
it is more difficult to walk in snow, and there are many biological effects upon your body in cold temperatures. One last reminder, the snow removal crews also ask you not to shovel or blow snow into the roadway. Place it somewhere, but not in the roadway. We've left many driving rules, regulations, and safe winter driving tips out of this program, as you can't cover this subject in a short period of time. Be aware and take action to avoid the hazards of driving in bad weather. As we've discussed, watch out for the other guy. Slow down and use your good judgment and driving experience to stay safe if you must drive in bad weather. Since bad weather increases the vehicle accident rate, make sure you have all the necessary information with you to make an accident report. Driver's license, insurance, and what to do and who to notify in case of an accident, and it's even a good idea to keep a camera in your car. Photos of the accident scene, vehicles involved, and conditions will help investigators determine the facts of the accident. Take a look at other drivers, speeding, making fast turns, speeding, tailgating, speeding, and other bad habits, then don't follow their example. Plan your trips, allow extra time to get where you're going, and of course, drive safely every day, all the time. You're too important to take chances. A safe driving program wouldn't be complete until we mention to buckle up and don't drink and drive. Thank you.